Okay, in this video we're going to assume that we've completely assembled our product and we're going to create a drawing of it. So we're going to come down to the plus and we're going to create a drawing. We're going to go to custom template. There's only two things we need to worry about. The first is changing it to third angle projection, which is the standard in Australia. The second is setting the page size, which is probably going to be A3. After that, we can hit OK and wait for the drawing to load. OK, once it loads, you can see the title block, the grid around the outside, everything is set up for us. So like when we did the assembly, we can start to insert parts. So you notice here we can add from the part studio or the assembly. So we'll start by doing a part. Let's dimension our long piece. On shape will automatically set the scale for us. Okay, we're actually going to start with the top, I think, here. So I'll change that. And now when I click, it inserts it. And when I come up above it, it automatically puts in the corresponding view as soon as I click. And we might do this one more time. So it's on projected view. We click on one, bring the mouse over to where we want the other view, click again. Okay, I would suggest three views is plenty for this. If we want to put it over to the side, we'll note that handily everything stays aligned. So if I lift this one up, the other two will move as well. We do want a bit of a gap in between things. Okay, dimensioning is just like in our sketch. So most of the time we can just use the normal dimension tool and we can click on some points. So we might do the overall length, 450, thickness, 19. We can dimension these two at 45. We might choose to do the overall like so. One other thing you might like to do is to use the note tool to name the drawing views. So all we have to do is click on it and then click where we want the text and type in what we want. You can change font sizes, everything like that. Hit the tick when you're done. And we'll do one more here. Okay, like the other tools, we can click on this later on. We can double click and it will bring up the text editing. So for instance, I might like to move this into the center. And now I can get it to align a lot more nicely. Double click, center justify, tick. Okay, one more thing that I'd like to insert is an isometric view, just to help with the clarity of the drawing. So I'm going to click on the insert view button and change the view to isometric. And then if I wait a couple of seconds, I get the preview, I can click and place it. I'll click off this tool. Any view that you place, you have different options for. So you can right click and you can do things like show hidden lines, of which there'll actually be none for this view. Um, for the 3D view, you can do things like shaded view. Most of the time, however, you would leave it black and white. Okay, now we might do an assembly. Typically, you would put that on a different sheet. So let's come to the Sheets button and insert a sheet. Now we're working on Sheet 2. We can close this. And we will go to Insert View. And click on this little button on the left here to bring back our original dialog. This time, we'll go to Assemblies. And it will insert everything from that Assembly tab. A really handy one here might be to insert the view and then switch to an isometric.
Okay, so this time we're going to go back to insert view and we're going to hit this little button here and change it to assemblies. And I'm actually going to go for an isometric view here before I click on it. Now I can place that one in the middle. Typical type of thing you might do with something like this is to then have balloons coming off to label all of your parts. So you might have one coming off here for part one, another one coming off here for part two, this one coming off here for part three. After you finish with the tool, you can come back and double click any of these and change the label. So if you're doing A, B, C, D or actual names or anything like that, that works quite easily. Okay, perhaps I've decided that this is way too small on the page. So what I can do is come up to my sheets and hit the settings and go to properties. And then I can change the scale on this here. So let's go twice that size, one to eight. Okay, I think I could even go a little bit bigger again. Okay, that's starting to get a little bit more like it. Any of these things are editable just by clicking and dragging. So you can keep it nice and clear. Now to title blocks, all the text down here should be editable. So it gives you a bunch of things by default. If we change back to sheet one with the full title block, you can, if you want, delete any of these lines by clicking and deleting on them if you don't want all of this detail. But other things like the title is set up for you. So you can type in whatever text you want. Everything will update for you automatically. One last important thing to note is that if you were to come back to the Part Studio and edit it because you realized something was wrong. So let's say I had a mistake with one of my dimensions. So this piece here, I'd realized when I was adding in the halving, I'd reduced it to 450 when it was actually meant to be 500. I can edit any of my dimensions, hit the tick. The assembly should automatically update. It's still the same corners, so it doesn't lose its reference. And then when I come to the drawing, it doesn't quite automatically update. You can still see here it says 450. All we need to do is come up here and click the update from this workspace. Okay, we've updated to 500. If you want to print, the best thing to do is to come down and right click on drawing one and then come to export and when you download it as a PDF all of the line weights will be very fine and clear and it will be perfect for interpreting in a workshop.